Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swagglehoss. And in this video, we got to talk about She-Hulk because yesterday we got the drop for the She-Hulk trailer and the comic book market actually used a lot of poise, patience, and self-control in their comic book buying. Obviously, I'm kidding. The comic book market went absolutely bonkers for freaking Frogman. So in this video, we're going to talk about it here today. We're going to take a look at some of the books that have been moving in the market. And then we're going to take a look at some other books that might still be interesting to look out for for the She-Hulk show. But before I get into the video, if you guys could drop me a like or comment or subscribe if you're enjoying the content, helps for the channel doing those things, I'd appreciate it. But let us get into this video here today. And of course, I'm just gonna be kind of looking at some of the books that have been moving. We'll kind of talk about, you know, what the market has been gravitating towards. We're gonna look at this character of Frogman. I mean, you would think that this would be a character that Swagglehoss would like, but even this character is a little suspect for my taste. But let's, uh, of course, get into the main story, which of course the main story is the fact that we got this She-Hulk trailer that came out yesterday. Now, in case you know, you, you didn't see it. I definitely highly recommend you go watch it. But even if you haven't seen it, I'm going to talk about some of the books that have been moving. Now, of course, the titular character of the show is She-Hulk. So we got to talk about She-Hulk's first appearance in comic books, which is, of course, Savage She-Hulk number one from 1980. Don't know why the picture is so small. There we go. We're going to zoom in. And this has been a book moving in the market for quite some time. I mean, obviously, we've known that She-Hulk was going to be coming and getting her own Disney Plus show. So this is a book that has had many peaks and valleys in the market. But what we saw yesterday, yesterday with the result of the trailer is a flurry of sales overall. Now, it's not to say that we got an all new record high, but let's just count the number of books that moved just here on May 17th. Uh, let's go up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 30, 30. We got about 30 sales for Savage She-Hulk number one, which is which is a lot. It's a lot for that book overall, including some, some of the highlight sales we got. Uh, somewhere in here, we got a 9.8 sale that sold for $1,200. Now that's not an all new record high, but that could be a calendar high uh, for this particular year, which is actually kind of surprising because I don't know how you guys felt about the trailer overall. I thought the trailer was fine. I would say the CGI was a little bit suspect, but I'm surprised that that, you know, uh, inspired people to, you know, dive into this book so heavily. But I guess I kind of get it. She-Hulk is a pretty cool character. I'm definitely going to watch the show and, you know, maybe it's going to be great. Uh, some other interesting sales that happen here are that is that we got two 9.8 sales uh, that were actually signature series with Stan Lee. And this one sold actually yesterday for $3,000. Really interesting because this was a live auction. So what are the chances that the day that the auction was ending actually had the trailer come out. We saw it here sell for $3,000. And then later, um, I'm actually surprised that there was another copy available on eBay. This, this had a slash price of 3,200. So I think it's probably safe to assume that this sold around that 3K mark as well. So pretty surprising overall that we got some of those sales. And this is one of those books that, you know, like I mentioned, it's, it's had such a history of sales in the market and such a uh, a spread in terms of its values. You can see right here from the graph, just over this last like year and a half or so, how many, you know, different range of sales this book has been going for. And one of the reasons for that is that this is actually one of the highest census count books that is out there in the market. I think that there was actually a warehouse find of Savage She-Hulk number one uh, some years back, and that actually flooded the market with tons and tons of copies. Uh, so this is one of those books that's going to be a hard, is, is always going to have a hard time sort of maintaining a high floor value just because there's so many people out there that probably want to move on with their copies. But you can see here, 90 day average was 1050. Uh, I mentioned that the 9.8 had sold for $1,200. So, you know, it's not to say that we're getting an all new record high sale for this thing. But with the flurry right here on May 17th, you can see that we were, you know, uh, all four figure sales ranges here. And then just quickly glancing, you can see that there's a lot of three figure sales uh, previously to that. So, you know, that has definitely kind of encouraged sales in the market. It feels like people are maybe starting to get a little more excited about the She-Hulk character. So it is interesting. I don't know if we're ever going to eclipse some of those record high sales that we were feeling last year in the market. Uh, that book was moving a lot for like the 16, 17, $1,800 range. I think that there were actually a couple 2K sales. I don't know if the show is going to boost it to that, but you know, it'll be interesting to see. Maybe there will be a lot of She-Hulk fans converted uh, after the show. But of course, the real story we have to talk about from the trailer is, of course, the character of Frogman. Now, we had one small image 
that you see right here on your screen in the trailer. Uh, and from all accounts, basically they're inferring that this is the character of Frogman. Now, there was a little bit of a first appearance controversy in terms of what is going on with this particular book. Uh, there are actually two books that moved quite a bit in the market. Uh, specifically, that is Marvel Team Up number 121. This is the first appearance of the character known as Frogman. Uh, the character's name is Eugene. So a lot of people are thinking that this is the one. There's also Daredevil number 25, which is also the first appearance of Leapfrog, who I believe in context to the comic books is the father of Frogman. So both of these books have been kind of moving in the market and it's a little bit confusing as to which which is the actual character that is going to be showing up in the She-Hulk show. Uh, but it didn't really matter because comic book collectors went crazy for this book as well. You can see at the beginning on May 17th, this was like a, whatever, a $6, $5 book, maybe a $10 book, uh, whatever the case is. And then you see here, sale, 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 a bunch of sales, uh, just scrolling up, scrolling up, scrolling up. Uh, it, it's actually incredible. I think that this one right here, I got to say, is pretty amazing that this book even existed. Uh, but where is it? Let me see if I can find this one. Totally lost it. Look at this. There's actually a 9.8 on the census with a Stan Lee signature. I mean, imagine you were the person who's been specking on Frogman that you got your book signed by Stan Lee, a slash price of $1,000. Uh, I think that the previous record high 9.8 sale for this book was like around the $500 range. So safe to assume that this one went for like 800 or so. So that one's really crazy. I mean, imagine specking on Frogman all that time ago. Uh, now this book, you know, what started as a five, six to $10 book at the beginning of the day is now hovering around like, you know, a $55 book. Uh, this is kind of uh, typical of like, I think trailer books that get super hot. You know, when we think back to like New Avengers Illuminati, they usually push back up to like that 50, 60, $70 range. Uh, similarly here, when we talk about uh, Daredevil number 25, first appearance of Leapfrog, uh, this is another book that, you know, definitely had a lot of sales uh, just yesterday. So one, two, three, four, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I mean, you can see here, like above like 40, 50 sales or so, you know, quite a lot compared to what this book would pre previously be moving for. And it's really, really crazy because, you know, when I think of uh, Leapfrog right here, you guys know me, I love B-tier villains, but this is a book that I regularly pass over. I mean, I love B-tier villains, but when it comes to Daredevil's B-tier villains, even these guys are a little silly for my taste. But you know what? I'm actually really happy for the Frog Fam out there. Yes, that's right. We're going to call them the Frog Fam, uh, Daredevil 25, and Marvel Team Up number 121. Of course, there were some other She-Hulk books that moved a lot in the market. I mean, Sensational She-Hulk number one, this book, uh, you know, the John Byrne run, this had a lot of sales. I think, you know, I counted about, you know, 20 or so. So a book that has been moving. There's been also a couple sales of like Incredible Hulk 282, you know, the first uh, team up of these characters, not too many, but definitely a lot more than would move on a typical day. We're looking at about six sales or so. Uh, there's also things like, you know, West Coast Avengers number 46. This has been kind of a character, uh, first appearance of Mr. Immortal, kind of like Frogman that has been insinuated that they're going to be showing up. We didn't get them in the trailer, but this is a book that sold, you know, three copies or so yesterday. And then we also saw, you know, Emil Blonsky uh, Abomination in there. And we had about, you know, six or so copies move in the market. This kind of feels like the book where the market is actually a little bit uh, hesitant with this one because it's kind of a fool me once, fool me twice situation. Obviously, we got Abomination in Shang-Chi and a lot of people went absolutely bananas for this book uh, and now we're getting him back again. I think the market is a little hesitant with what this character is going to do. Uh, but I actually really do think that this is going to be a great time to kind of, you know, jump back in on this character if you can find a good deal. I mean, maybe it's not the time to buy this book now. In fact, actually, you probably should have bought this, say, a couple months ago. But I do think that, you know, Abomination is going to be a very, very involved character in the show. And, you know, if we're still leading up to, say, a uh, Contessa uh, situation where she puts together, the, you know, the Thunderbolts team, it definitely feels like Abomination is going to be one of the characters on those teams and is going to have a long future in the MCU. So I do like this, this book overall in the long term. Now, before we wrap the video up, we got to talk about some other interesting sort of books that have been kind of rumored about with regards to She-Hulk. And I'm not saying that you should be, you know, buying these books or, you know, specking on them. But what I am saying is that if you are that person who knows that you're going to FOMO into something, uh, you know, maybe you want to at least consider some of these books now before we see them again. Now, of course, this book right here, Tales to Astonish number 48, first appearance of Porcupine. Unlike Frogman, Porcupine is a respectable B-tier villain. 
at least in my head canon. Uh, but this is a character that has also kind of been rumored in the same way that, you know, we got the reveal of Frogman. This has been another character that's going to be sort of a gag character in the show. Probably he's going to just show up in one episode, going to be, you know, the end of a joke uh, or one liner and people might go crazy on it. But, you know, at the end of the day, it, it's not like Porcupine is going to have a huge future in the MCU. Similarly here, there's this Invaders number seven, first appearance of Baron Blood, another character like Frogman that has been insinuated to show up in the show. And then the last one that has been kind of rumored about is this one right here, Daredevil number 78, first appearance of Man Bull. I mean, there's a lot of talk right now that She-Hulk is going to be representing a lot of, you know, villains uh, in court or that they're going to be putting, you know, them in rehabilitation with Abomination. And these are some of those kind of goofy villains uh, that are reported to possibly be showing up in the She-Hulk show. So if we're thinking about how the market moved on Frogman, it'll be interesting to see if any of these characters show up, how these books will react as well. Of course, we got a couple other things in the trailer that were interesting. We got this image right here, which a lot of people are saying this is the, you know, wrecking crew. And for a long time, there's been speculation that, you know, Defenders 18, first full appearance of the wrecking crew, characters like these were going to be showing up in the MCU. I actually love the wrecking crew. I've talked about them so many times. Uh, but this is a book that, you know, I don't think this one didn't necessarily move because this image was so, you know, uh, abstract. It's hard to say if that's actually going to be the characters in the show. They might actually not do sort of the, the visual aesthetics of the Wrecking Crew. That would be a disappointment. But this is a book right here that, of course, is interesting to keep your eye on as well. Uh, also, of course, we know that Jamila Jamil is going to be playing Titania. Titania's first appearance is in this book right here, Marvel Superhero Secret Wars number three, the classic miniseries from the 80s. Now, this book did move a few copies. I would say like six or seven. So it could be showing up on some of the lists this week. But it definitely feels like Titania is going to be an important character. I mean, Jamila Jamil is kind of, you know, um, you know, she's a pretty up there actress. I think she has definitely a nice little following for herself. So I can imagine this character having legs in the MCU in the future. And then, of course, some of the other books we need to talk about. What if Planet Hulk number one? Uh, this is the first appearance of Scar. A lot of rumors about Scar showing up. So this is a book to keep an eye on. Also, we have Alias number one, you know, first appearance of Jessica Jones. A lot of people discussing that Kristen Ritter might make a cameo in the She-Hulk show. And then last but not least, of course, there's Tales to Astonish number 63, which is, of course, the first full appearance of the leader. We had Tim Blake Nelson play the leader or they were insinuating that he was going to be the leader in the Incredible Hulk movie all those years ago in 2008. Uh, based on what is happening with these Disney Plus shows, it's sort of hard to say, you know, if we're going to get some of these characters. It doesn't actually feel like a lot of these shows ever end up showing that extra character that we're hoping for. Like Moon Knight didn't have Werewolf by Night or, uh, you know, Mephisto did not show up in WandaVision. So I'm a little bit worried or a little bit, you know, skeptical that we're at this point going to be getting the leader in the show, but you never really know with these kinds of things. I mean, in Loki, we did in fact get Kang, so that was pretty exciting. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. Let me know what you guys think. What did you guys think about the She-Hulk trailer? Are you guys specking on any of these books? Did you guys FOMO into anything? Uh, what do you think is going to happen in the show? Drop me a like, comment, subscribe if you're enjoying the content, and I will see you in the next one.